Hey there, I'm John Siskovich. We are outside my brooder right now, and we're going to discuss the babies that are in there, uh, still in there, the birds that have moved out to the field right over in that area, uh, and what poultry is coming next week and what I have to do to prepare for that. So if you watch some of my other linger grazing videos, you knew I had a predicament where normally I don't brood two batches of birds at once, uh, but I had to split up my space, my very technical, sophisticated barrier, uh, and put the broilers there and my 50 egg layers here that is replenishing some of our egg laying flock. So with the broilers hardened off, and you see, we'll jump back in here for a second, that door right there leads to an outside area. That outside area is this chicken tractor. Now we just moved them out of here, so it's nice and full of poop. Those birds are just eating and pooping machines. So we got the back door. Back door swings open. You know, my weatherproof flaps. Um, they have that area where I put a feeder and a waterer in. Uh, now that they're gone, I'm going to shovel out the inside and I'm going to sprinkle some wood chips and some of that hemp stuff on the outside here to uh, start to balance out some of that manure. Maybe I'll put some lime down to help with my pH. Zip making sure there's no rodents. Thanks, buddy. Now I want to get this cleaned out because what I think I'm going to do, because <clears throat> these guys are older girls, uh, is move the girls from here to here once this is cleaned out and has fresh bedding down and then prep this area for turkeys, which arrive next week, which is very exciting. I have never brooded turkeys before. I raised turkeys last year, but my friend Heather Holland brooded them for me. And I just got to pick up started birds, which I have to say was a pleasure because it didn't work out in my brooder schedule turkey, future turkey area, or future egg layer area, future turkey area. But it's going to be 90 degrees today. I'm probably going to leave this door open starting right now. I have that mesh to help keep wild birds out. Got my little viewing area that it's easy to walk into. And uh, I will point out that because we have to walk from one area to the other, and I have birds stacked on top of each other deliveries because schedules got off this year. My biosecurity is not the best. So if we were doing this at a huge scale, we might want to rethink how we uh, structure this, but because we're at a nice small manageable scale and our biosecurity measures aren't the tightest anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and do our best to balance our brooder life with the rest of farm life. Saturday morning is my absolute favorite time to linger graze. Um, and plan and think because I'm on my own schedule. No one is around. Uh, there's nothing, like, there's no forklifts driving. It's quiet, birds are chirping, watching the sunrise. Rethinking my decision to wear pants instead of shorts. Um, and yeah, it is just perfect. So finding that time during your week to relax, take a moment, appreciate, enjoy, and think about what are the exact steps? What do the birds need in the brooder? What do the birds now need in the field? And we're going to go do field chores in a little bit with this little cell phone camera rig I got going on. All right, here's a video tip. Uh, I'm out my, at my brooder uh, on the farm, been doing farm stuff. And uh, whenever I start to shoot video for the first time, I have it in my head. I always throw out the first one. It's you're always try it. Like either don't hit record and pretend you hit record and um, just do your video uh, and see what happens. But you can also hit record and record the first try and know that you're on camera, you're being recorded, what your words are now immortalized uh, with that little digital file and get past the insecurity of doing the wrong thing, saying the wrong thing, um, you know, presenting the wrong information, having a work ban in the background, beautiful background shipping container. Um, 
<laughs> do your video, mess up, shoot it again. Storage is cheap on phones, on computers, on the cloud. Uh, so you can mess up, store those files, watch them back and say, this is what I like to improve. Oh, the lighting was bad there. I can't believe I had that in the background. All these things that run through my head when I'm shooting a video. Um, but if you get past the, the drama and the insecurity of that, that blank page, you'll shoot the video and you'll say, no, that was too long. I have to make it shorter. Or no, I wanted to change this one part. And you go back and you iterate and you practice. It's just like farming or driving a car or anything else. You're going to take it slow at first, try the waters, get comfortable with it, and then hopefully you will be able to better share your message about your farm on what, with what you're producing in a transparent, honest, open, and fun way. There's my chicken tractors. Isn't that great? Ducks are still in there. I put that roof on the workshop yesterday with my good friend David. And we still don't have a garage door for the new addition onto the brewery because everything is back ordered. Um, yeah, hope that tip helps. Throw out the first video. Uh, enjoy your day. I'm going to go continue to do chores before it becomes 90 degrees outside. And until next time, I will see you out in the field.